and Harry 1 and 2 are finally being released on US NES by Retrobit, but are they any good? I'm going to take a look at the original Carpenter Gensen, Daiku no Gensen, and Daiku no Gensen 2 for Famicom to show what we can expect when these games hit later on this year. See what I did there? Carpenter Gensen, aka Hammer and Harry, is an SD, super deformed platform action game starring a charismatic traditional Japanese carpenter fighting against an evil cartoon construction company by running, jumping, and hitting them with a giant wooden mallet. It's a blue collar beatdown. Carpenter Gensen is an 8 bit Famicom 1991 port of a 1990 arcade game by the same name, also by Irene. However, this was already around the release of the Super Nintendo in the US, and US gamers were a lot quicker to abandon 8-bit hardware than Japanese gamers were, and as a result, we never got Carpenter Gen in the US. Candy. Europe, however, did get the game, and Gensan was redubbed Hammer and Harry. The Famicom version is a good reimagining of the arcade game, and it's not just a straight port. They changed quite a bit, and I think the home version is better because of it. It's a bit faster, and there's more Famicom jumping action. So, the story is that an evil construction company is out to tear down the town of Boranme and demolishes Carpenter Gen's construction office. It's basically like dojo smashing, where a martial arts rival school will go and stake a claim by taking the signpost of the dojo. Very, very Japanese. Our hero is a traditional Japanese carpenter who uses traditional building techniques to build traditional buildings. However, the bad guys are all modern industrial construction workers. So who's to say if this game is a commentary on passing up traditionalism in favor of the Japanese boom economy? It's a tale of the anxiety of industrialization in the late Showa era that was prevalent during the bubble economy in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Or it could just be that our hero is a traditional hard-working Joe and the man is out to mess with them. Hammer and Harry is a working class warrior against gentrification. It is a side-scrolling platform game when you run, jump, and smack the bad guys with your big wooden hammer. There are power-ups such as work boots, a bigger hammer, and a helmet. Even with all of them, the difficulty curve is still pretty tough, but the controls are so good that when you take damage, you blame yourself instead of the game for being cheap. It's good that there are mid-level checkpoints, so you don't have to completely start at the beginning of the level when you die, but you still have to finish a level with 3 lives after a continue. I would also recommend watching the demo animation before starting the game because there's a lot of nuance to using your hammer as a shield and pounding the ground that I initially didn't know about when I started playing the game, and it's a real game changer, or at least read the manual. Of course, I got an imported game and didn't get the manual, but it's good to know. This is a 1980s Nintendo hard Famicom game, but the enemy patterns are exactly the same, so you can learn the game, get good, and then you can get through it. Carpenter Ganson for Famicom was made in 1991 and used on-cartridge memory mapper chips to good effect. It really has detailed graphics with characters made up of multiple sprites and really takes advantage of the graphics tech that wasn't possible without memory mapper chips. The graphics are quite good and they really push the hardware as far as it will go. It has adorable character designs based on late 1980s anime manga aesthetic. Our hero has a good amount of humor and is quite likable. I especially like the sense of humor in the fight with the evil secretary when you get to the evil construction company headquarters. This is Irene trying their hand at a Mega Man style game, and it works. Irene had done some really excellent sound design, and this one is no exception. The music is plucky, cheerful, and again, very, very Japanese. It is one of the rare Famicom games with digital voice samples. At each level starts off with Ikuzo, or Let's Go, <laughs> and was translated to Let's Get Busy in Hammer and Harry. Let's get busy! 
Gaiden! I think his girlfriend says, well done, or Gensan. But I can't tell because the sample rate is so low. Still, it's very impressive to have voice samples on the Famicom. It's really surprising that a fun game by a major developer didn't get released in the US. Irem is a major top talent NES Famicom developer that went back to the early days of the system, and this didn't get released in the biggest game market in the world. That's incredible. It's like the US not getting a Mega Man game. It's a little strange that it was brought to Europe as Hammer and Harry, but not to the US, since the NES was much more popular in the US at the time, and Europe was ruled by Sega. Honestly, I think Hammer and Harry is a perfect localization by switching out one cultural persona for another. This is a very, very Japanese game with Japanese tunes, super deformed anime characters, and Japanese industrial iconography, which is instantly recognizable to Japanese kids of the era. So, the first Carpenter Gensan was too late to get a North American domestic release, however, it actually got a Famicom sequel. Daiku no Gensan 2 came out in 1993, which is quite late for Famicom games, and as a result of this, it's incredibly rare and expensive. Instead of getting a legitimate copy, which can be between $110 and $150, which is a bit rich for my taste in Famicom carts, I got a bootleg copy from China. It's a bad bootleg, and it's not even the right color, but it plays fine. This was before learning of the Retrobit release, and I thought it was my only way I was going to have this game on cartridge. Apparently, there is the same evil construction company who teams up with an old mad scientist with a spaceship that builds an army of evil robots and captures Gen's girlfriend. The robots on the train remind me of Pat Labor, and that's a good anime reference in my book. It's more of the same, and that's not a bad thing. It's almost twice as long as the first game. There's even side-scrolling cutemop stages as our hero flies around on a magic hammer. The sequel seems to be a heck of a lot harder. The boss fights have to be done in a particular way, and it can be a little tough to figure it out. They're basically invincible unless you knock back their attack back at them or whack them at a particular time. I had to look up a long play to get through them at certain points. The upcoming Retrobit release plays on both PAL and NTSC systems. The first game is a localized PAL version that Europe got, but it's updated to run on NTSC at full speed. The second one has the original sound effects, but the text is a new translation. Hopefully Retrobit will translate the Carpenter Gensan Super Famicom game and the two Game Boy games in the future. Back in 1991, I can see why the American Irene corporate executives decided to pass on localizing this game, especially since Nintendo of America was quick to convince their third-party publishers to get on board with the Super Nintendo ASAP. That, combined with Nintendo of America's licensing agreement, which had Nintendo solely manufacture cartridges for the American market, and third-party game publishers had to pony up a sizable investment up front, that made publishers very, very cautious about what games they chose to bring to the U.S. So, U.S. Irene probably bet the company on Super R-Type in 1991, and not Hammer and Harry. And it's a crying shame because it's a phenomenally fun game and it really encapsulates games made of this vintage. I really think Retrobit is doing Western gamers a real solid by doing an official release on cartridge in 2023. It's very anime, it's very Japanese, it's 8-bit, and it's really dated. All the things that make it a no-go for publishing in 1991 make it perfect for 2023. We want cute cartoony 8-bit games. We want super deformed 8-bit action. We want dated vintage gameplay. Also, it's not a long game. If you know what you're doing, you can beat the game in half an hour to 45 minutes. But sure, it could have been beaten after it was rented at Blockbuster, but you can now sit down after a hard day's work and transport back to your early childhood and play a game that you never got a chance to. The pre-order period has ended, but it's going to be on sale at your favorite local game shop. So if you collect NES games and you want to see something new to you, definitely check it out. These games are a perfect example of new to you games or hidden gems. I want to help people discover awesome retro games like this. Encouraging people to discover games like this is one of the reasons why I started this channel. 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It would really help me grow this channel if you would consider subscribing. This is Apit Joystick. Stay awesome. Play retro. You're such a cat. Yeah, you are. <laughs>